Good morning. And Merry Christmas. My name is Dana Corsello, and I'm the vicar of the National Cathedral. And on behalf of our Bishop Marianne Buddy and our Dean Randy Hollerith, I want to welcome you here this morning. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being patient as you waited outside and uh, in that you braved that wind. How many of you were just blown through the doors? I bet it was a lot. We're so thrilled that you did uh, dare to go outside and join us this morning and that you wanted to spend or want to spend your Christmas morning with us. We are so grateful. We're, we're just so honored that you're here to spend Christmas with us. So I offer you a hearty, hearty welcome and a welcome and good morning and Merry Christmas to those of you who are watching online. As I always say, without you, our community would not be complete. So Merry Christmas. Just one note, right after this service, well, around 1.30, we will have a glorious organ recital. So for those of you who can stay, you are more than welcome to join us for that. So I, I certainly hope you will. Again, Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for being here. And we pray that the rest of your day is as blessed as it is this morning. Thank you.
blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, and who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen. Your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in plain sight, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed. Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the sun, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you created the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing, like a cloak, you will roll them up and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same and your years, your years will never end. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. You, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. When we arrived on the outskirts of Bethlehem, the city wasn't like anything I had imagined. But this was my first trip to the Holy Land, and the Bethlehem I had in my mind's eye was nothing more than the culmination of romanticized Christmas cards and childhood Christmas stories and the depiction of Bethlehem in hymns. But there we were last Saturday a week ago, 30-plus pilgrims from Washington National Cathedral arriving in Bethlehem for the 11th annual simulcast service between this cathedral and the Christmas Lutheran Church. This was no little town of Bethlehem, oh, how still we see thee lie. Instead, this was a bustling, noisy, hectic, crowded Palestinian city in the heart of the West Bank. The traffic was so bad, in fact, 
that it rivaled Mass Avenue at 5.30 on a Friday afternoon. God forbid. In fact, the roads were so jammed that in order to make the service on time, we had to get out of our bus four or five blocks from the church and walk. It was overwhelming. There was no calm, no angels singing sweetly, no hushed reverence. Rather, as we made our way through the streets, sticking out like the Americans that we were, as we weaved between parked cars and sidewalks packed with pedestrians, vendors hawking their wares, and women sitting in doorways selling stalks of cauliflower as large as your head and radishes the size of baseballs. President Trump's announcement that the United States would move its embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem was still very fresh news. There was tension in the air, and you could feel it. There had been some protests and unrest in Bethlehem and Jericho, Ramallah, and a few other Palestinian cities and towns, but we had seen none of it. In fact, we experienced nothing but the utmost welcome and hospitality everywhere we went. However, as we walked those streets that Saturday afternoon, you could feel the tension. You could feel the frustration and the sadness among the Palestinians, Muslims and Christians alike. I can't begin to tell you how powerful it was for me to travel those crowded streets that day. As I look back on that experience, it makes much more sense to me that the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, would be born in a real Bethlehem rather than the Bethlehem of my childish imaginings. As sweet as this time of year can be, Christ did not come to dwell in pastoral calm. He came to live in the midst of real human life. We have to remember that Jesus, too, was born when Bethlehem was an occupied territory full of tension and unrest, amongst people who yearned for freedom and self-determination, Jesus was born to be fully a part of this life, our life, your life, the good and the bad and the ugly of it. He came to live and ultimately to die as one of us, to know our struggles, to feel our fears, to take part in every aspect of the human experience. There's an old Zen story that you may have heard about two monks who are walking along, arguing with one another about which one of them was more holy. When they came to a river, one of the monks stepped out from the shore and walked across the surface of the water, reaching the other side of the river completely dry and untouched. Looking back to his friend, he said, that is what it means to be holy. Immediately, the second monk dove into the river head first, splashing and paddling and struggling his way through the water to the other side. As he reached the shore, he stood up exhausted and dripping wet and cold and said, no, that is is what it means to be holy. On Christmas, we proclaim that the God we worship is not distant and ethereal. Our God is not a God who is cold and indifferent, the great clockmaker who fashions the universe and then steps away. Rather, 
What we proclaim on Christmas is that our God is a God who gets down in the river with us, who literally humbles himself to become one of us, flesh of our flesh, bone of our bone, to share our joys and our sorrows, to know our laughter and our tears. The truth is the wonder and the beauty of Christmas rests precisely in its rawness. A babe born in a busy, bustling town amongst smelly farm animals to a poor, unwed couple. God born with no home so that God's home might be found in each of us and so that we might make our home in God. When I was first ordained, I used to worry about having just the right prayer when I visited parishioners in the hospital. At that point in my ministry, newly minted from seminary, caring for people in those circumstances was all about having the right words. Or at least I thought so. But what I quickly came to understand was that good, good, loving pastoral care has very little to do with beautiful words from the prayer book and everything to do with just showing up. It wasn't the words of the prayer that mattered when I was with people. What mattered was being there holding the hand of someone as they passed from this life into the next, gently laying my fingers on the fevered forehead of a parishioner as I sealed them in the sign of the cross, swabbing parched lips with cool water or just holding someone as they cried. A beautiful prayer was nice, but it was nothing compared to the importance of really being there. Today, we celebrate the good news that in the birth of Jesus, God understands the importance of really being there. God comes into our messy, rough-hewn, patched-together lives and says, I love you and all that you are so very much that I am willing to become one of you. I am willing to feel what you feel and think what you think, to laugh as you laugh. Therefore, the joys of family that you know, I know. The struggle with death that you know, I know. The fear of being alone that you know, I know. I will become as one of you to raise all of you up to me. And the great miracle of this day is that because of this, your life, my life, all human life is given a dignity and a nobility that it never could have had otherwise. You see, as far as I'm concerned, the greatest threat to life, the greatest threat to life is not death, but meaninglessness. I can die a meaningful death, but I cannot and I will not live a meaningless life. If it doesn't matter what we do, If it doesn't matter what we think or what we feel, then why do anything at all? The light that has come into the world is the light that dispels the darkness of meaninglessness. It is the light of hope. It is the light that hallows our joys and sanctifies our sufferings that says it all matters. It is the light that says, in our God, all of our strivings makes sense. 
In our God, all of our living has value. In our God, we are the beloved. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to worship at the Lutheran Christmas Church with our Palestinian brothers and sisters who represent a dwindling number of Christians in the Holy Land. I found hope in their hope. I found faith in their faith. I found strength in their courage. Bethlehem was not at all what I expected it to be, but as I stand here this morning, I am so glad that I had the chance to experience the real Bethlehem in all of its complexity and confusion and struggle. Because if Christ can be born there, then there is no reason he can't be born into the complexity and confusion and struggle of our own hearts. So come, come Emmanuel, come amongst us, come and bless us, come as one of us so that we might have your life and have it abundantly. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, a one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By that power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the heavens and earth are filled with the peace and love of the Word made flesh, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all, draw all peoples to you that your wisdom may be known to the ends of the earth. God of love and peace, strengthen your church, O God, to be a messenger of peace, that through its proclamation and life it may bring the good news of Christ to all who are disheartened. God of love and peace, Make the leaders of nations, states, and communities to be lovers of goodness and truth, that all your children may be nurtured and protected. Uphold all who strive for justice and freedom, that their work for peace may sh shine with your saving love. God of love and peace. Yes. 
Hear us, we pray. Raise up those who are lowly and powerless, that the light of Christ's birth may scatter their darkness and bring renewed hope. God of love and peace, Hear us, we pray. surround with your love the lonely, bereaved, and all for whom this season is a burden, that they may know the arms of your mercy. God of love and peace, hear us, we pray. Remember those who live with fear, poverty, anxiety, illness, and all who suffer, that they may be comforted and lifted up. God of love and peace, hear us, we pray. Unite us with all the saints in the light until we join them in the brightness of your heavenly glory. God of love and peace, hear us, we pray. Almighty God, grant that through our prayers, our lives may radiate the presence of Christ to all who dwell on earth, for he is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! That's a B minus. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. My name is Randy Hollerith. I'm the Dean of the Cathedral. And uh, just to echo what Dana said a little earlier, it is an honor and a pleasure and a joy to have all of you with us today. I hope you will have a very blessed day with family and friends. And we're so glad that you're here. We hope you'll come back often. Now, I know that Christmas is not always the easiest for everyone. There are those amongst us this morning who are missing someone in their life that they have had for many previous Christmases. There are those this Christmas who are struggling with illness. There are those who find themselves alone in ways they had never expected. I want you to know that we are so grateful that you are here and part of this cathedral family. And we want you to come back and be with us often. And that if you are one of those who struggles on this day, you are very much in our prayers. We move now at this part in the service from the Liturgy of the Word to the Liturgy of Sacrament. And all those who desire to know our Lord Jesus Christ are invited and welcome to come and receive communion this morning. Regardless of your church affiliation or lack thereof, it makes no difference. If you desire to know Christ, then come and be fed at God's table. If you've never received communion in an Episcopal church, the tradition is to place one hand on top of the other. The priest will place a piece of bread in your hand. We have gluten-free bread for those who may need it, so simply ask. Then you eat the piece of bread and take a sip from the chalice, or you may take your piece of bread and dip it in tincted in the chalice, if you would prefer. If you don't want to receive communion, that's quite all right but I hope you will come forward at the appointed time anyway and simply cross your arms over your chest so that we might just share a prayer and a blessing with you. Finally, if God has blessed you during this holy season, I hope that you will share some of those blessings with us at the cathedral. This place receives no federal funding, no money from any larger church body. Every bit of money that we raise here for all the mission and all the ministry and all the services comes from private donation. So if you are able to help us in the ministry of this place, we would be very, very grateful. But most of all, we're very glad that you're here. 
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the blessed Mary and Joseph, Peter and Paul, our patrons, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let's pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ.